Hello everyone, I'm Zili Zhang from Peking University. Uh, today I'm glad to share our work fast vector query processing system uh, uh, for large data sets beyond GPU memory with the real pipeline. Uh, this is joint work with Feng Yue, Gang, Xuan Zhu, uh, and Xin from Peking University. And uh, before introducing our work, I would like to introduce some background about vector query. Uh, vector query uses machine learning to translate the similarity of text, uh, images, or audios into a high dimensional vector space and process uh, pairwise distance evaluation to find the nearest uh, uh, labor vectors for query vector. And with the, growth, uh, with the growth trend of big data, the scale of the vector database gets advanced to the billion. So our system focuses on the billion scale database. Uh, uh, specifically, as shown by this animation, there are some back points denoted as the database vectors. And the uh, orange point uh, represents a query vector from users and vector query is aimed to find the uh, top key of vectors as soon as possible. And one straight way to, is to enumerate every possible uh, vectors and record the distance, and the system returns the vector with the smallest distance. And uh, in this example, the system should return the, uh, the blue point as the top one result. And the vector query is adopted in many uh, real-world AI applications, like information, information retrieve, face recognition, uh, recommendation and uh, enhancing natural language models. In particular, uh, recent advancements of LLMs have catalyzed the uh, uh, emergency of a new generation of AI applications such as ChatGPT. However, LLMs only support a short-term memory, uh, like uh, uh, 30, 32 tokens for uh, GPT-4. Uh, vector databases are applied as a persistent and long-term memory for LLMs, which is called retrieval augmented generation. And the animation shows the workflow of RAC. Uh, so RAC converts the personal and organizational documents into uh, some high dimensional vectors and constructs a vector database. And uh, when user posts a question, it first uh, issues a vector query to identify a set of documents that may contain an answer. And these documents, along with the original question, are then fed into an LLM. And the LLM then analyzes the text information and returns the final result. And as the scale of the database grows up to a billion and trillion, vector query becomes the key bottleneck in this workflow. And uh, recently, many vector databases support fast and accurate vector query to support the upper layer AI applica applications, uh, such as Mavos, Pinnacle, and Face. Uh, KNN use enumerate and returns the exact top key results, and it requires searching on the entire data set, so KNN becomes impractical for large data sets due to its high correlancy and low throughput. And the approximate top K uh, layers labor, ANN trades query accuracy for query latency. Since ANN model is not 100% of uh, accurate itself, so ANN is enough accurate to serve the AI applications, and ANN is widely used in the existing vector database. And the current mainstream vector search algorithm includes two types of, two types of uh, approximate uh, search algorithm. One is the inverted file index, uh, also known as IVF. So, and the other is a graph index. And specifically, an inverted index uh, divides the vectors into several clusters and with a clustering algorithm like k-means. During a vector query, the search is only conducted on a set of clusters that is closest to the query, query vector. And a graph index treats vectors as, a, as points in a graph, so and collecting vectors with small distance via edge. And the search is then performed by traversing the graph structure. And th these two algorithms have different system characteristics. An inverted file index only leads to maintain a few clusters and choice, uh, while a graph index requires maintaining a multi-level graph. So, uh, in terms of memory usage, a graph index often takes up to several times more space than an inverted file index. However, to achieve the same accuracy, uh, an inverted index uh, typically requires more computation. So GPUs are literal designed for vector operations, and the primary computation in vector query is the uh, calculation of distance between different vectors. Well, and whatever distance type, uh, the, <laughs> the calculation involves performing addition, subtraction, multiplication, or a division on the elements of the same dimension into vectors. And the computation is highly parallelizable, so it's naturally suitable for the GPU parallel programming. 
Uh, currently, many vector-core engines support GPUs as backend to accelerate the vector, vector computation, but they are not widely used in production. Uh, for example, a multimodal that, that I said, Text 1B, has a memory for, for, footprint of uh, 750 gigabytes, but high-end GPU like H100 only has a 80 gigabytes of memory. So if using multiple GPUs for one data set, it, it is a waste of the GPU computation resource since vector search adopts approximate search, which only requires a small portion of the data communication. Computation. So, limit, so limit, uh, limited GPU memory is the key bottleneck to stop us from using the GPU for vector search in production. As for choosing the index, uh, IVF is more suitable due to its no memory footprint. So we focus on IVF to design our GPU-based vector query systems. And a natural idea for supporting large vector database with GPUs is to use host memory to expand GPU memory, such as transmitting clusters from memory to GPU memory one by one, or using CUDA unified memory to automatically handling the data, data swapping. However, this approach faces many challenges. The first challenge is to reduce the redundant data transmission, and the second challenge is to maximize the GPU utilization for computation. And the second challenge is how to maximize the efficiency of pipelining, the uh, transmission and computation. And uh, this is from three system uh, perspectives. And the first challenge is to uh, reduce the redundant data transmission within a batch. As demonstrated in the figure, assume the GPU memory can then uh, can contain three clusters, and the transmitting and computing order in G1 to G3, and uh, we use letter C to represent cluster and Q for query. So first, we should transmit C1 to C3 in the GPU. Second, we should swap C4 to C6 in the GPU, while swapping C1 to C3 out of GPU. So the GPU memory capacity is only three. So next, we should retransmit C1 to C3 into the GPU, so it will result in uh, C1, 2, C3 uh, swapping twice. So here comes the redundant transmission. So if we swap the order of G, order of G2 and G3, uh, there will be no data transmission. So you can reduce the data. Uh, if the transmission and the computation are based on uh, groups, so each, each, each group computation comes in bound to a GPU kernel. However, if, if this kernel may lead to uh, low GPU utilization, of, of the GPU three multiprocessors. First, when building an index in the vector database with the inverted file index, uh, the number of vectors in different clusters varies. Therefore, in the GPU kernel of vector search, there might be a long tail block computation, which defer the entire kernel execution. Uh, second, the computation, <coughs> the computation node of each group might not fully utilize the GPU SMs. As shown in the figure, if we if the computation only includes three blocks, and we have four SMs in the GPU there, then one SM will remain idle during the execution. And uh, so there are two GPU utilizations. Uh, since the GPU copy engine are, and computer engine are two independent components, we can overlap the transmission and computation. So the third challenge lies in designing a pipeline strategy for runtime transmission and computation. Uh, for example, A is the original computation and transmission plan. If we uh, swap the order of G, G2 and G3 uh, as B, we can clearly increase the overlapping. And similarly, dividing G3 into fine grained subgroups as C, as, as C also improves the overlapping. And uh, so exploring every possible plan would, would incur exponential complexity to find the uh, optimal plan. So it is impossible to solve it at the wrong time. Uh, below, I will pre present the design of our system. The first technique is cluster-based query plan to fading. The left figure illustrates the original query uh, plan where there, is a, where, where there is redundant transmission. And this technique transforms the original query-based plan into a cluster-based plan. So as shown in the right figure, this plan prioritizes count clusters. So if, if cluster C1 is accessed, all queries related to C1 are executed immediately. So uh, then it transverses the next clusters, and this ensures that uh, each cluster is transmitted at, uh, at the most once, so uh, it eliminates the redundant transmission. Uh, furthermore, if a few clusters like C5 and C6 remain in the GPU memory before processing this batch, uh, the query plan will compute this cluster first, so this, first, uh, so the, this further reduces the number of transmissions. 
And for computation optimization, we first employ cluster balance technique. During the offline construction of the inverting file index, it performs a balancing operation of all clusters. And specifically, it splits the clusters with the large number of vectors into some small ones. And this ensures that all blocks are executed in the same time. And here we use letter B to represent the balanced cluster. And uh, this technique solves the GPU temporal, temporary underutilization. And the second computation optimization is dynamic color padding. If the system detects idle SMs before their color computation, this technique uh, automatically splits the computation from some SMs and moves the split paths to the soon be idle SMs. And this technique achieves 100% of spatial utilization. And additionally, having multiple blocks computing on the same SM can also improve the GPU occupancy. And the, the third technique involves designing an optimal pipeline scheme to achieve uh, the, maxima, the maximal computation and transmission overlapping and minimize the pipeline overhead, such as the cost of synchronization. S uh, since the query plan of vector is independent of the cluster search order, we need to consider the issues of how to sort and how, how to group the clusters. And from, for these two problems, we propose two, two optimal algorithms, respectively. The first algorithm is the reordering. As soon as uh, the processing order of B1 to B4, the cluster is balanced. Uh, B4 has a transmission time of zero. And if we move B4, which, have, which has a zero transmission time if at the, to the beginning of the order, uh, then the computation of B4 can be comp completely hidden in the transmission of B1. And you can see the example in figure B. Furthermore, if we move B3, which has the longest computation time to the, uh, to after B4, we can further increase the uh, overlap between the transmission and computation. And the example is in figure C. So based on these two observations, we propose a corresponding gradient algorithm that, gradient algorithm that moves the clusters with their transmission time and the non-computation time to the front of the order. And this algorithm can achieve the optimal performance. And you can read our paper for the detailed proof. And the second algorithm is the dynamic programming to find the optimal cluster groups. The first step is to calculate the execution time for a given group plan. And we have two scenarios where the last group can or cannot feel the delay left by the previous groups. And the maximum one is the final execution time. And we can derive the recursive formula of the entire execution time. In the actual version, the overhead of the pipeline system should also be considered. And based on the recursive formula, a dynamic programming formula is proposed. And uh, we can leverage this formula to design a dynamic programming algorithm and to find the optimal grouping solution. So now we have an optimal order and an optimal grouping plan to maximize the pipeline efficiency. And based on the aforementioned techniques, we designed the first GPU-based vector coring system beyond GPU memory, RAMI. And we implement a system provided with with, uh, with 12,000 lines of code in C++ and uh, CUDA. And the system workflow is showing, showing here, and you can refer the paper for more details. And we evaluate Rami on AWS, the, uh, the A100 GPU instance is used for overall performance evaluation, and the, the V100 and the T4 GPU is uh, used for uh, application study. And we use safe deep text vector data set with 1 billion vectors for vector query workload. And the first evaluation is a comparison with the baseline on the GPU, where the, the, where the door bound is the theoretical minimum time. And IVF rotation sequentially transmits the data blocks and then performs computation one by one. And IVF CUM utilizes the OS level CUDA unified memory for automatic data swapping between the host memory and GPU memory. It is evident that RAMI achieves the real optimal performance and significantly outperforms the baselines. And the second is the comparison between RAMI with one 800 GPU and uh, IVF CPU with 64 vCPUs. As shown in this figure, uh, RAMI outpops the CPU solution up to tens of times and uh, achieves a higher uh, cost effectiveness. And you can refer, refer to our paper for more details about the ablation studies and the offer, of the also aforementioned techniques and the comparison with other AI indices. In conclusion, RAMI is the first GPU-based system for billion-scale vector query processing beyond GPU memory. It focuses on the system design and is also orthogonal to the algorithm optimization. And the existing vector database can integrate RAMI with their own AI indices to expand the limited GPU memory. And that's all. Thanks for listening. I'm ready for questions.